Hello. Good evening, Facebook family. I hope some of my friends are on. Or uh, social media family. <laughs> I hope you all are on. And I wanted to share today. I'm trying to see if some of my friends going to catch me. And I didn't make an announcement today. Um, I has, had a, a great weekend. A very busy weekend. Thank you, Erica Williams. And uh, a red circle for... The seven days and one night event. Hello, viewer. How are you? Uh, let me know where you're tuning in from. Just uh, give me a shout out. So I am coming in. Hello, everyone. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, I can't see who you are. Hello, Mr. Smith. Hello. How are you? Hello, everyone. Uh, this is the missionary. <laughs> I'm coming in tonight. I'm going to be talking about the valley of decision amen and so you know god definitely this is a great time of the year many people are making many plans for the upcoming uh 2020 the next decade wow we're going into a different decade isn't that amazing and i wanted to come in and i wanted to talk a little bit about the valley of decision and so what is that all about and so my reference scripture will come from luke 5 17 through 26 and we're going to read a little bit of that. Hello, Mr. S Miss Pamela. How are you? Thank you for tuning in. And so uh, I come on. I'm trying to come on at 7 o'clock on Sunday evening. Sometimes I may be running just a few minutes behind. And uh, But tonight I am on. And I wanted to come in and talk about the Valley of Decision. And how many times, you know, uh, we're right on the, hey, Mr. Hen. Hen uh, Mr. Charles, hi, thank you for tuning in. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hey, Mr. Uh, Prince Daniels Marvell, thank you for tuning in. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing well. Miss Pamela, hope you're doing well as well. So I typically come in on Sunday evenings. I try to make it a habit. Uh, and uh, I try to come in and talk about some here once in a while. Hey, Mr. Lambert, thank you for tuning in. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, yes, definitely. I want to come in on Sunday. Sometimes people may not go to church. Sometimes people may not get something out of the word. And so people definitely uh, sometimes are on social media. And it's a great opportunity to connect because the word of God is so powerful. The stories are so enlightening. And anytime I get a chance to share the word of God, especially as it relates to something that everyday people can relate to, I want to share it. So I'm going to be talking about the valley of decision. Okay, typically... It is a place in between this and that, or it's after a mountaintop experience. How many of y'all have ever had a mountaintop experience? And then when you go back to the valley, it seemed like, like, what happened? Like, I was so excited upon the mountain, and next thing I know, I'm coming back down the other side, and I'm in a valley. In between walking in, the, in between that, that space where, you know, uh, as I go along my journey, uh, another opportunity will go for me to go up another mountain. So today we're going to talk about the valley of decision. And I'm going to start in Luke chapter 5, verse 17 through 26. I'm going to read this story really quickly. And uh, I'm going to be in and out of here. And so hopefully you guys will get something out of it. Because really, you know, we are going into a new decade. 2020, everybody's celebrating. It's a big deal. Yes, it is. And so many of us are in the valley of decision. And so, you know, I just wanted to read this story. I'm sure if you're a Christian or you've been around the things of God, you've heard the story before. But I am applying it today to the valley of decision. So let me start reading. This is again is Luke 5 and 17. It says, now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Amen. Then behold, men brought a bed, a man, brought on a bed, a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. Hey, cuz, how you doing? Hello, Annette. Thank you so much for this weekend. I really appreciate it. I'm reading Luke 5, uh, verse 5, 17 through 26. I'm on verse 18. It says, Then behold, men brought on a, on a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. 
And when they could not find how they might bring him in, in because of the crowd, they went up on the rooftop and let him down with his bed through the tiling into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said to them, said to him, man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees begin to reason, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Mr. Darcy Smith, thank you for tuning in. Immediately, he rose up before them, took up what he had been laying on and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed and they glor and they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, we have seen strange things today. Amen. So I'm reading again. That was uh, Luke 5. Amen. All right. And Luke 5. It was verse 17 through um, verses 26. And I was reading about the paralytic as Jesus had gone to. Uh, let me let me make sure I got my story right. It said Jesus was in a, a certain a certain day. It says he was he was teaching. So I'm assuming he was in the synagogue or someplace out where he did his his preaching and teaching. And how many of you know whenever the word of God is going forth and truth is trying to be birthed, there's always some people in the midst that don't believe. Always some people in the midst, always some naysayers and some player haters that don't believe. They don't have the faith that you have. But this particular story shows in the Valley of Decision, everybody that was involved in this particular uh, event to get this paralytic man from a bed lifted up the side of a wall took some tiles out the roof, and they let him down before Jesus to be healed. Isn't that amazing that people <clears throat> back in the day, even as, 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 as difficult as the task seemed, that somebody made a decision that day, amen? We often are in the valley of decision. We're between this and that, yes or no, maybe so. But there comes a time when you have to make a decision. And these men along with this man that was laying on this bed that was a paralytic, they had come to a decision that today was going to be their day. There was nothing going to stop them. There was nothing going to stand in their way. They had a made up mind before they even got to the building. Amen. They had all agreed. See, they said we're two or three uh, touching and agreeing on anything and, and, and you do it in Jesus name. It shall be done for you. Amen. So if people came into agreement, with this man, this paralytic man, so he couldn't walk. So he had to find some people to come in agreement with him, to stand in faith with him. Many times you may have people around you, as it says, the Pharisees and the teachers were standing around when Jesus was teaching. And it goes on and it says down in, in verse 21 of, a, of a Luke 5, verse 21, it talks about the scribes and the Pharisees begin to reason within themselves. Amen. There are many people that are standing on the sidelines watching you. They are watching what you're going to do. They are watching to see if you're going to fail. They're watching to see if you're going to succeed. And many people's faith can be taken to another level by watching you make a decision. Amen. Many people don't realize this is 2020. We're going into a new decade. Amen. 2020. It's a new year. Many people looking forward to it, but many of us stand in the valley of decision. That means there is a low, there is a middle section here. You are halt be between two opinions. You're going to have to either serve God or serve Baal. You're either going to be saved or you're going to be unsaved. You're either all the way in or you're all the way out. There is no fence sitting when it comes to the things of God. Amen. So when I read this story about the paralytic, as I said, he couldn't even walk, but he had friends to come and 
agreement with him that brought him to the place where they knew Jesus was. Amen. So faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Back then, how I many you know, it wasn't no Bible. They had some scrolls, but see, they had heard of the great things that, that Jesus had done. They had heard of the miraculous things that he had did while he was going through these different towns. What did he say? Galilee, Judea and, Ju Judea and Jerusalem. Jesus was all over doing great works during this time. And so when they heard Jesus was in town, hey, listen, some people, you better hear God. You better hear him. You know, he passing by. Many of you all are in the valley of decision. The day has come for you to make your mind up what you're going to do. You either in or you're out. You either committed or you're uncommitted. You either saved or you're unsaved. You're coming into a new decade. That same decision you've been sitting on all this time is still waiting on your yes, waiting on your no, waiting on you to decide this or that. It's called the valley of decision. These people had made their mind up. This paralytic had decided that I'm going to get my healing today. I heard that Jesus was there. I got faith to believe. And if y'all could just get me to his feet, I believe that I will come out a man walking. Amen. And when you read on over in verse uh, 25, it said immediately he rose up before them, took up what he had been laying on and departed to his own house, glorifying God. Amen. So it takes faith to make a decision. Many of us we have to realize that when we have major life changes, major life choices that have come before us, we need to be asking God. We need to be consulting the word. We need to tune out all of this outside interference. I'm talking about TVs, other people talking, all these other uh, secular, uh, how they do their things. We need to get along. And find out what God has to say about the subject. We're talking again about the valley of decision. We were in Luke 5, 17 through 26. And we were talking about how these people had a made up mind. This paralytic knew that his day had come when he heard Jesus was near. How many of y'all say, Lord, don't pass me by. Don't we sing that at church? Amen. So this man was like, I'm not going to let this opportunity pass me by. I know I cannot walk, amen, but I'm going to have to reach out to some of my brothers and sisters and ask for some help, amen. Many of us, sometimes, we do not reach where God wants us to be because he is about collaboration and connection. Sometimes, you're going to have to ask some people to help you. Now, you still got to make the decision. The paralytic had to make the decision that he wanted to be healed, but he found some people to come in agreement with him that they were willing to take him to where Jesus was. Amen? So, as they traveled with him, I'm sure they were having conversations. They was already excited. Why? Because faith is for now. Faith ain't for no time in the future. Faith wasn't before he, he already had faith before he got there. So the faith that he needed, he was already walking in it. He was already seeing himself walking before he got there. Otherwise, he would not even made his mind up. Or was it? He wouldn't even made a decision to have no people to take him. Amen. Who wants to be made a fool of? Amen. God is not in the business of making fools out of his children when you step forth in faith. Amen. It may take a minute to realize what he did and why he did it the way he did do it. But if you have full faith and trust in God, trust, he said, all things, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and the called according to his purpose. So if you are that person, definitely. I'm not saying everything going to turn out the way we want, but when it comes to the thing of God and you read the things of God, you have to have faith in him, faith in the word, faith in what he can do in order for you to be able to see yourself in it and realize what you can have in the word belongs to you too. Amen. Hey, Mr. McLove, I like that name. Thank you for tuning in. I'm talking about the Valley of Decision. I was reading out of Luke 5, 17 through 26, where it's talking about the paralytic was laying on a bed and he heard that Jesus or found out Jesus was in the area and he said, hey, y'all, I'm going to need to hitch a ride. I'm going to need y'all to drag me, pull me, whatever you got to do. But I need y'all to get me to the feet of Jesus. Amen. And these men carried their friend. Listen, they lifted this man up on the side of a building and took the tile off the roof and let him down in front of Jesus. Amen. Hey, cuz, how you doing? That's some faith for you. A lot of us ain't willing to put... Two cents into nothing that God tell us. But this man, there's no telling how far he had to travel. There's no telling how long they had to carry him. But he had made his mind up that today was his day. He made a decision <coughs> that he wanted to rise up and he wanted to walk. Amen. And so that is what I'm talking about. The valley of decision. Are you in a valley of decision? It's a pivotal choice that may set the, chain, the course of your life for the next season, the next decade. Amen. 
Some of us are in the middle of a decision, the valley of decision. We're contemplating. Somebody say paranoia will destroy you. Amen. You can't be paranoid. You got to get in this word. You got to get on your knees. You got to talk to God. Amen. And you got to let faith rise in you. Amen. So this man was believing that God was going, Jesus was going to be able to touch and heal him. And forgive me, y'all. I use the word Jesus and God interchangeably because we all know that Jesus is the son of God and the Holy Spirit is a spirit that, that came to dwell within us so that Jesus and the spirit and, the, and that he could be available to us anywhere, anytime, all over the world. Amen. And so I use those words interchangeably because to me, they all the same. The Trinity makes one. Amen. The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. It's all the same. So don't trip off the word. Trust me, because when you know who God is, he know your name too. Amen. So we're talking about the valley of decision, how it's a pivotal, a pivotal choice that you must make that's going to set the course of your life for the next season and the next decade. And when all eyes are looking at you, what will you do? Amen. Many of us are afraid to speak faith. We're afraid to speak it out of our mouth. We're afraid to demonstrate it in our everyday goings and doings because we have an audience. People are looking. Many of us are afraid to step out to do something that God has called us to do because we're afraid of people watching. We're afraid of failing. Hey man, how many of you all know that failure was not an option for this man that wanted to be get up off this bed? He was a paralytic. He was not believing that he was not going to come away walking. Otherwise, he would have never gone. Amen. See, that's what we need to know about God. God is in the business of doing what he said he going to do where his word is concerned. Amen. He said, my word will not return to me void. It will accomplish that which I sent it forth to do. So many of us, we need to get in his word, get it down in you and get some faith in you because there are many things that you need to make a decision on that you still standing in the middle of the way. God done told you what to do. God has the answer. God has been impressing upon you to ask him, seek him, ask God, ask the Lord, what should I I do? What decision should I make? Amen. Trust me. There are many things that's going to come your way. But right now, as we begin to go into a new decade, 2020, many of us are standing at the valley of decision. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Listen, you either believe God or not. You either trust God or not. You either going to walk it out or play a hate from the sidelines. Amen. Many people get mad when they see God blessing you. Why? Because you refuse to let faith make you sit down. Amen. See, not choosing is a choice when you're in the valley of decision. Silence is saying something when you're in the valley of decision. The things of God require an answer in the valley of decision. You got to make a choice. It's no, I think I maybe not. Is you either in it or you all way out. It's no fence sitting when it comes to the things of God. You either believe him all the way or you don't. And it's as simple as that. And when, when people People are looking at you when your faith is being tested, when your faith is on display. Will you still stand strong and believe what God has told you in the secret? He says, if you pray in secret, he'll reward you openly. Hmm? He said, watch as well as pray. Many of us are praying, but we ain't watching. Amen. Because we're looking to see who's looking at us. Amen. We got to be paying attention to know when the signs are being shown to us that God is speaking. Amen. God is speaking all the time, but are we listening? Have we tuned out everything so that we can get the information that we need? See, many of us have things we need to do, but it takes wisdom to do it. Hey, hey, cousin, how you doing, Mr. Larry? How are you? Thank you for tuning in. The Valley of Decision. Many of us, a lot of times, we got to go right or left. Is it yes or no? Maybe so. What do I do? You're in the valley of decision. But many times when you don't make a decision, you're making a choice. Amen. There's no fence sitting going into the new decade. 2020, it's going to require you to make a decision. You either in it to win it or get on out. Amen. This ain't no time for no people that's flinching, that's scary. You either believe God, you either trust God, you either got faith in the word, you got faith in him or you don't. And this, this paralytic. He wasn't letting them stop him. Amen. He made his mind up. Hey, Mr. Rubin, thank you for tuning in. He made his mind up. He was not going to be left laying in his bed. And he found some people to come in agreement with him because he made a decision. Today was the day that I'm going to get up off this bed, but I'm going to have to find some people to help me. Amen. And that's exactly what happened. He found friends. Do you know how much strength it takes to pick a human being up? Dead weight laying on a bed 
to lift him up beside the wall and take some tiles off the ceiling and lower him down? Do you know how much work that was? Do you know how much arm strength that took? You know how much coordinating that took? But that's what God has us. We're in the valley of decision. He got all the people lined up. He got all of the gimmicks. He got everything you need is already right there. But you got to come in agreement with him. You got to come in agreement with the word. You got to come in agreement with the word that you heard. You got to come in agreement with the faith that's in you. You got to come in agreement with the now words you heard from the prophet. You got to come in agreement with the rhema word God then gave you through the pastor. Amen. Many of us hear the word of God being preached just if you're a person of God. You're around that all the time. But it's supposed to increase your faith. So when your day comes in the valley of decision, amen, you're not afraid to approach God and say, Lord, what shall I do? You need this counsel, wise counsel. Jesus is wise counsel. God is wise counsel. The Holy Spirit is a teacher. He's a guider. And that's all you got to do is go to him and ask him. Many of us, humble yourself. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. If you don't know what to do, you don't know and you can't clear, clearly articulate it. If you can't get it clarification, you need to go to the one and only Savior. God can break it down to you in a way that you can understand. He says the word is for the learned as well as the unlearned. That means you can be a person that's illiterate. You can be a person that's, that to the, highest, to the highest matriculation of education that they have. And God still can get a word to you. Ain't God amazing? He don't have no barriers. He breaks the barriers because faith don't have no age. Faith don't have no gender. Faith don't have no age. Faith don't have no color. Anybody that got it can use it. Amen. So you're going to use your faith today in the valley of decision because it's a place between this and that. Here and there. Hither and yon. Yes or no. You got to make a decision. You're in the valley of decision. Just like this man that was paralytic laying on his bed. He made a decision when he woke up. Well, I don't know how many days it was. He had prepared for this, but he had made his mind up that today was going to be the day he was going to see Jesus and he was going to get up off his bed and walk. I mean, you know, <coughs> excuse me, in Luke 5, 17 through 26, in verse 25, it said immediately he received strength and he got up. He rose up before them and took up what he had been laying on. Amen. And departed to his own house. That means he walked on his own power. Amen. How many of you all, you know this miraculous because if you know I'm laying in bed for a couple of days to take your strength, your muscles start to atrophy immediately. You know, anytime you laid up any period of time, you got to have some therapy. But this man was paralytic from a birth. Amen. And he was able to walk out of this service on his own power. Amen. Nobody but God. Amen. He didn't say he wasn't a little shaky. He didn't say he might not have been a little weak, but it say he walked out. Amen. See, a lot of us, we expecting God to come in and do what he do. But you got to put all your weight on the word. You got to put all your weight on God. He not going to let you be back flinching. You either believe him all the way or you don't. You in the valley of decision. When your faith is tested and when God is putting you in a position where he want to show himself strong on your behalf, you're going to have to step up, step out, and make a decision. Hey, amen. Ain't no sitting on the fence. Ain't no fence sitting when it comes to faith. You either believe God or you don't. You either believe the word or you don't. You either believe that you're going to trust in him all the way or you don't. It's no in between. I want to come in and talk about the valley of decision. Many people are right there on the precipice of making a decision that's going to change the course of their life for the next decade, for this next season. And God is wanting to know while you're in the valley of decision, what you're going to do. What you going to choose? You going to choose God or you going to keep doing it your way? You going to listen to your friends or you going to do it God's way? You going to listen to your, your, your enemies? <laughs> You're going to let them drive you in a direction. Many people are afraid to step out in faith because they think people are looking and they don't believe God is going to come through for them. Now, what about that? Many of you all are standing in the valley of decision because just admit it, your faith ain't where it need to be. But you know what? It ain't nothing but the word tells you many times people that say, oh, ye a little faith. He done said, help me. Help my faith. Amen. That's all we got to do. Ask God to increase your faith. Ask God to give you the strength to make a decision. Ask God to give you the strength to make the difficult decision that look like, I know, I can't believe this is actually going to work. But if God say it is, it is so. I'm sure the paralytic, when they was carrying him along the way, I'm sure many people seen him and they had something to say. Just like he said, the Pharisees and the teachers was reasoning in their mind because, listen, every time when God doing something miraculous, he always leaves somebody that don't believe around to see what happened so that the witness can, can make uh, 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 speak for him. Amen. God, he see Jesus, he didn't have to do his own propaganda. He didn't have to do no marketing. He didn't have to do none of that. All he had to do was results. Amen. See, that's what faith is about. Jesus was about results. A lot of people about a lot of talk. 
Faith is going to produce something if you walk in it, if you step on it, if you put it out there, if you speak it, if you walk into it. Many people want God to move. See, God tell you, you got to sign up for the test before he give you the test. That's just how it go. You got to sign up before you take the test. You're not going to see the test. The test going to come. Hopefully you pass it the first time, but if you don't, God is good to teach you and let you take it again. Amen. So I just want to come in very quickly, talk about the valley of decision. Many of us are on the, the dawning of a new year. And it's time to make a change. It's time to say yes or no. It's time to get off the fence. It's time to make a decision. And there's no more delay. You got a couple of more days before the year is over. And we don't want to hear your same stories because what I'm going to do, the old missionary going to bring you a box of tissue. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you to call me when it's over, when the, whatever you thought and you didn't do it God's way ended up on the ground. I'm going to holler at you when you come back and let me know. You're going to have to put God in the mix. Amen. That's what this paralytic did. He made his mind up that the day, the, the day was his day. He was not going to lay on that bed one more day. And he found some people to come in agreement with him. And they took him on to the feet of Jesus by lifting him up out the outside of a building, turning the tiles off the roof, and letting him down through the building in front of Jesus to be healed. And as he went out, in verse 25, it said, immediately he rose up off of what he had been laying on. And he was able to go on about his to his destination, and he glorified God all the way. So that's the kind of words I want to hear. Going to glorify God all the way because you actually stepped out to make a decision. Remember what I said. Not choosing is a choice. Silence is saying something. And the things of God require an answer. So in the valley of decision, what will be your decision? Make a choice. Amen. Have a good evening.